our workshop chair, Kraft, Vice President, Michael Fry, and he's going to give us the market update. So let's give him a round of applause. Uh, I've got 35 minutes, so I have to talk really fast. Uh, okay, from. Uh, I'll try to get this off the screen. Okay, so once a year, I try to put together an idea both nationally uh, for both homes and then a section for rental properties and then a sexual section for our local market. So we're going to start off with national homes. Uh, this is Zillow for said. By the way, I grab stuff from from the government, from Fred, from St. Louis uh, Fed, uh, from Zillow, from a number of different places. So, if somebody needs to look at this or has questions about it, we can talk about it later. So you can see the inventory. This is national inventory, and the bottom is usually the, the year. And I'll try to for those folks who cannot see everything, I'll I'll let you know that bottom is the year. So from 2010 to 20, 2017, we dropped from a peak of about 23, a little over 2,300 to down to about, uh, what, 1,200. So we've, we've obviously been burning up inventory. So none of the, uh, what you've seen as far as a lot less than the MLS, that's reflected nationally. One thing I did look at is there's some unique properties to the Ohio market. We'll talk about just I'll briefly about that, but the Ohio market does tend to go in a slightly different direction than the rest of the market in certain areas, particularly in the rental areas. Okay, ownership rate. Uh, ownership rate is still in the story lows. Got two stories here. So still in historic lows for, uh, you can see that back in 2007, ownership rate was ridiculously high. If you do a baseline along this, around about 64.5% is where it's traditionally been. And we're actually still below that right now. There's a couple reasons for that, and I'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So inventory time series. So current inventory, the annual change, you can see that pretty much across the board, it's down 12% nationally. Uh, obviously, the larger markets, the LA's, the uh, East Coast, is down considerably more than that. We respond more to the uh, Philadelphia, around Philadelphia and Chicago, so we're down around that 13, 14% drop. So if you use the MLS to find homes, Make fun of Let's talk about one of the reasons why. By the way, I'm using a piece of paper as a mouse pad, which is why this thing's not jerky. Uh, so we now have, you know, and we also we've been talking about millennials, which is the 24 to 35, living with their parents. We've seen a little bit of a decrease in that, not much. It's not reflected on the end of this because this was about mid-2016. But in the last 12 months, from what I've been able to gather on other charts, we've seen about a 2.5% two, two drop from where the peak was here at 33.9%, which means 34% of the people who are active first-time buyers are living in mom and dad's basement. Or they're renting. But this is, from this statistic, this is living in mom and dad's basement. Let's talk about why they have to live in the basement. Okay, because if you look, Dayton, Ohio happens to be on here, right here. The MSA for Dayton, Ohio, the average down payment for 20% of the price of the house around here takes seven years to accumulate. So if somebody started accumulating when they were, let's say, 25, they're not going to be buying until they're almost no longer millennials. You know what I mean, as far as the age bracket goes. Uh, and you can see it's, it's 32 years in Los Angeles. <laughs> not many millennials buying homes in Los Angeles that are first-time buyers. And 